Right, so today we're going to be uh, taking a look at uh, my latest acquisition, aside from my uh, messy desk. Uh, this arrived today. It is a uh, optical fiber fusion splicer made by Signal Fire. Uh, this is the AI-8 model. Uh, the AI-7, I believe, is quite similar, but a bit slower from what I've gathered. Um, this is the standard packaging. Pretty much everyone will sell it like this, either with the green or a uh, yellow. Um, I didn't specify color, so I got the green one. Uh, it's not a horrible color. This is the uh, stool that they advertise. It just sits on top here, and you can access the handle like that. Uh, it's not very big, um, so you're really going to be um, crouching down if you're going to be sitting on this. It's uh, not a bad foot dress, though. Uh, it also comes with this uh, sort of carrying strap. Um, it's got these hooks here. The case itself feels pretty good. There's a bit of rattling with these things. Uh, when you use it. So um, we're gonna start at the uh, bottom, I think. Uh, we'll, we'll take a look around first. Just gonna get rid of this thing. Uh, there's nothing on the back. On the side here you have a little tray that you can sort of use to, uh, to work. Uh, this will fit, I think it will fit the uh, cutter they include, and they say this is a little, there's a little um, recess here, kind of a slot, and uh, I think you're supposed to put your crimp, um, uh, the um, ferrules and stuff to, uh, to cool down over there, so if you're splicing a lot, then that could be useful. For my use, I think this will be lucky to see uh, hundreds of splices a year or something, basically a waste of money. Uh, you have a little thing there, and you have a tray here, which it's not, it's not bad uh, quality-wise. It's a bit front-heavy with this pulled out. Now it's a uh, two-layer drawer. Angle the camera a little. Uh, what you get in here is a cleaver, uh, which is the SO9 in my case. It's I only tried it once so far. I'm going to try it again later. Um, this is the typical uh, design for these cheap cleavers. You you have a clamping block here that you know has a couple of different slots. I haven't really checked what all of them will do. Um, magnetic hold down and kind of a soft foam there. And some rubber clamps here. Um, you can do that there, and you can open it up, and your fiber should be cut. At least it was in my case. They also include this, uh, what I sometimes call an ashtray, which um, is not as fancy as some of the Japanese ones. It doesn't have rollers or anything, but it is. It does have a magnetic lid, and does keep fibers in it. Uh, you can screw it in place. Here, but it doesn't fit in in here if you um, if you attach this. Uh, one f feature I kind of like that's a small thing, but there's actually an Allen key here, and it's got magnetic retention. And this this will fit these screws. And I think it'll fit. Yeah, it'll fit that one too. So if you have additional plates, you can you have the tool with you. Just gonna leave that out actually. I will be using it later. Comes with this uh, alcohol bottle. Um, I haven't filled it yet. It seems fine. Um, let's see. I think, yeah, some pictures show this style and this fits. This is a, I think, 125 milliliters or something. These are very cheap, so even if this thing fails, not hard to replace. There's like a thin paintbrush, doesn't feel too great. Um, pretty, pretty fine hairs on it, at least. Uh, you got one of these things, which I think is for, 
Yeah, I think it's for stripping this sort of fiber here, two millimeter jacket. I haven't had too much luck using these in the past. Uh, I usually use something else. And it comes with this thing. This actually has uh, three holes and uh, it is adjustable. Though it looks like they've calibrated it. You see there's some glue in there. Uh, I found it maybe a little tight on the uh, buffer stripping, but um, I've seen some other variants of this, that uh, this is called uh, C CFS3. And um, I've seen some of these that uh, only have two holes, which is, you know, if you're working with uh, this stuff here, again, th this uh, should work quite well. Uh, you can do the, um, with the 900 micrometer fiber, you can, uh, you can strip that off and get the plastic off if it doesn't come off by itself. Now they have a bunch of labels on here. This is a two layer drawer and it is. Uh, so that just lifts out and you got your mains cable. They actually sent the right one. I didn't really ask for a specific one. You get a user manual. Uh, power supply here is 13.5 uh, volts 4.8 amps DC, uh, made in China, of course. It's just a standard, I think, uh, 2.1 millimeter center barrel jack. So if you wanted to replace this or something, it wouldn't be very hard to find a compatible one. Uh, manuals, not too bad, actually. Uh, by the way, this thing shipped fully charged. I'm not sure you're supposed to do that. To, uh, to do that. Uh, they've actually got a pretty good manual, I thought. it. Um, covers a lot of stuff here. They got arc calibration instructions, um, instructions for the toolbox, how to install the Bluetooth app, which we might take a look at later. Um, they also have instructions if you change the electrodes, uh, cleaver instructions are built in here, and some maintenance and troubleshooting steps. It also came with our QC thing. Silly gel. Uh, keys for the um, that's for the, the top portion up here and uh, this thing which I think is um, meant to fit on the actual splicer unit just put this back in here. There's a pretty decent amount of room in here so let's see you got a couple of allen keys I think these are just standard metrics you get a uh, single mode arc calibration fiber. Um, I tried to run an arc calibration, but um, it didn't really work. So I uh, didn't really work, um, or it worked. That's not what I meant to say. I um, I didn't set it to arc calibration mode, so it just spliced it. So it seems fine. And uh, this is a. Um, spare um, electrodes, which apparently have like a QR code on them that you need to use if you want to activate them. Uh, I'm guessing that's to keep the counter or warranty stuff. I'm not sure. We'll see later there's a, an arc, um, there's a counter built in for the arc. So, just fiddle this back into place. Not too bad. Okay. This is uh, where the money shot comes in. I'll move it in a little closer. I think I am shrink wrapped. I removed that. So you got some styrofoam around here, and there's also a gasket and a groove here. And uh, here's the splicer. I'll um, remove it from the box and put it down on the table. All right, uh, it's covered in rubber on multiple sides, kind of a gold and a nice aluminum finish. There's not much on the back. On the side here, you have a little full of thing, and you, you got a USB to charge your phone. This is a very expensive, though quite high capacity, phone charger. 
and the barrel jack for charging. I haven't tried that yet. Um, let's see. On this side, there's nothing much. There's a warranty wood sticker. Uh, manufacturer does claim that they actually have lifetime warranty on most of this thing and a one year battery warranty. That's what it said on the sticker. Uh, this button on the side here just pushes out the battery. It's a 7.8 amp hour battery and uh, looks like it was made earlier this year. I uh, only made about three weeks ago. So these things are probably selling quite well. Um, on the top here you have your V grooves and Miller clamps or whatever they're called for um, holding the fiber. You've got the actual arc electrodes here and then back here there's a uh, shrink tube heater. And uh, most of this stuff is sort of automatic it seems. Uh, unfortunately I don't currently have any of the electrode of the uh, ferrules shrink tubes. Uh, so um, I won't be able to show you that. Uh, other kind of wanky feature push there, there's an LED light. Uh, we'll go ahead and turn it on. It's a beep. Um, it starts off by asking you to, um, to use the app, and you do have to use the app, as far as I can tell, if you want to change any of these settings here, which are indicated with icons. Um, there's a bit of flicker on the screen on uh, my recording camera, but uh, that's not there in real life. It's it's quite a bright screen, and uh, it's, it's not bad at all. Uh, now, I won't be able to go through all these icons and stuff on the screen here, but uh, uh, a lot of these are, are changed based on, um, on settings you change in the app, but like these relate to how it aligns this pause symbol here means that I've set it to pause at each step instead of automatically displacing. I guess this means it will save the image. That, I think, is autofocus on and off. Uh, over on this side, you got what I believe just means normal mode, uh, auto power off, uh, automatic um, crimping of ferrules, that actually just turned on as soon as I opened it and turned on and it'll stay on for a predetermined amount of time depending on what length of ferrule you set. Don't know what these other things are exactly. I just beeped there so that means it's, it's crimped, uh, not crimped, sorry, shrunk the uh, ferrule. And otherwise you got the X and Y stuff. Um, I think I'll just, um, <coughs> sorry, go ahead and um, just strip and cleave these two single mode fibers here and uh, off camera and I'll um, bring you back when I've got them uh, installed and we'll, we'll take a look at how it actually splices, I guess. Okay, we're back. Uh, we're back. I've just uh, stripped the, um, the fibers uh, to 10 millimeters. Uh, the clamps on here seem to be pretty universal in terms of what they'll accept. I, um, like I mentioned, I, uh, I did uh, splice the arc calibration fiber uh, originally, and uh, that wasn't that also fit. That's just a bare 250 micrometer fiber. Um, stripping with uh, these things, not too bad. Uh, it seems to be set quite well at the factory. Just close up that. And uh, let's close the lid, see what it does. And I uh, see there. Uh, so it did the pre arc. I'll just fix the auto exposure there. Uh, now it's at the pause mode, so I'm guessing I have to push the. Um, button there and fusing loss of zero and uh, maybe toggle through 
x, y. And I think that was the tension test. And it basically just ripped them apart. So I think it's time to do the arc calibration. That would be my guess. Either that or the tension test doesn't really work right. Uh, let me get the uh, arc uh, calibration fiber prepped. Um, all right, uh, this is after arc calibration. Um, you really didn't miss much. I uh, used to have to set it to arc calibration mode and then put into, I just used uh, these uh, single modes that I had laying around. Uh, it should be the same quality. I found the uh, included uh, calibration uh, bit to be really hard to strip without breaking, uh, but this stuff's uh, much better. So you can see uh, basically what it did from, from what I could tell. I set it to arc mode, put, put it in, it just auto arced a bit and um, aligned these and then basically just burned them into this sort of bulb at the end. So, okay, I guess. Um, it then beat twice and now it's, this was in arc calibration mode, now it's back to normal mode. So I'm guessing it's, it's fine. I'm guessing the, the calibration went fine. Now um, I'm gonna try doing that strip again. I should note that the manufacturer instructions actually said not to um, not to use that uh, that calibration. Uh, uh, sorry, the tensile test, the stress test. What do you call it? The mode where it pulls on the fibers afterwards. Uh, so, let's see here. Like I said, this was preset from the factory and it's, it seems to have been set pretty well. Um, there's sort of a bulbous end to the fiber like you saw in the magnifier there. So that's probably uh, sort of catching on that, but I'm just gonna go ahead and redo this. do that and cut go ahead and there that's in the um, in the splicer uh, if you have the right length of um, a fiber, you, you cut long enough, then it will pretty easily either just fall in, or you can just sort of give it a flick, and it'll fall into the uh, the scrap collector there. In this case, the fiber is now stuck right there. I'm just gonna leave it, and let's see to the side and doing this with a camera running is kind of difficult let's see it's just about there I'm no expert on this that doesn't look very straight let's see if that works Didn't look too great initially, but the, uh, the little pre-arc sort of worked. Sounds happy. Next mode. Alignment, fusion. Point double oh one, that's good enough for me. Ah, I think it broke it again. Let's just uh, try this again and see what the ends look like. Ugh. Oh god. That looks horrible. It's like there's sort of fibers sticking out. Yeah, okay, let's, uh, let me recut those. All right, we're back and uh, loaded the fibers after recleaving.
No, I'm not sure if I'm supposed to be doing it this way. Let me just push this. Yeah. Yeah, see. Okay, I think I get what was happening. I think this is uh, user error. Um, I think what it was doing there, in, it wasn't uh, pulling them too hard and, and ripping them. You, you might have been able to tell in the, the last section when I tried to re-splice it. I think what it was doing was it was pre-arcing again, uh, thinking the fibers were already aligned. So it was actually done. Um, so let me go ahead and, um, and redo this again. You know, I'm new to this whole fusion splicer thing, so live and learn. And we're just gonna. Well, it's pretty arc really does wonders. So we'll try that. And let's just assume it's done. I'm pulling a bit on it when I'm doing this. It's not breaking. Um, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna find the piece of shrink tube that's sort of the right size, and we'll just try it in the uh, in the oven back there. All right, I've just got a, a three millimeter shrink tube on there. Just put it in here. See what happens. This is exciting, isn't it? Should beep when it's done. Let's see what happens. Looks like I think it's splicing. Just put this down. Okay. Yeah, it feels warm. Oh, look at that. Shrunk down quite nicely. And this is the point where you'd um, put it on that little tray earlier to uh, cool down. Really, I think it did heat up. I think at this point it'll. All... That heater is pretty damn fast, gotta say. Uh, so it started to cool down, and I mean it. Certainly spliced it. Can't really complain. Uh, so I mean, this is really just a first look at it. Um, there is an app. Um, you can probably find a lot of info on it in their marketing materials. I think they're quite proud of it. Uh, just from a little testing now, it actually did seem to work pretty well. It's uh, Bluetooth. It works fine on my iPhone. Uh, you don't even need to register or do anything to actually just use the features and control this thing. I was able to set it to arc calibration mode and stuff. Uh, like I showed at the beginning, you uh, don't need to use the app if you just want to splice, but uh, if you want to change any of these settings here, you basically need to, um, to uh, use the app um, by default, even like this play button here doesn't do anything, it'll just auto splice whatever you put in it. Uh, which for the intended purpose is probably fine. Um, you know, typically you know what kind of fiber you're going to be working with in advance. Uh, this will also, the app will also let you save stuff and it'll um, like let you, um, it'll record images of the splices, presumably of the time and date. You set the time from the app, so that's kind of neat. Um, there's also something about uh, activating the, um, the electrodes. You can see here I've done five and uh, they're rated for 3,000 uh, bursts. Uh, I'm not sure what will happen when it runs out. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if it just stops working until you put in new electrodes and you may need to register them. So there looks like there's a bit of DRM going on there. Uh, not crazy happy about that if that's the case. However, it kind of makes sense from the manufacturer's point of view. I don't think the electrodes for this thing were all that expensive compared to how much the machine was, uh, which I could mention I paid $850 uh, 
off uh, AliExpress. Uh, shipped here with FedEx. Took uh, about a week, so quite fast. Uh, seller was pretty good. Uh, did I did not uh, receive any kind of discount, uh, and uh, I had not been asked by the seller to make this video. Uh, I just wanted to make one that was unbiased, though unfortunately my knowledge of fusion splicers is not that great, so my technical knowledge is a bit lacking in this field, I'll admit. Uh, my only other experience with fusion splicers is um, at work we have a Fatel S177, which works quite well. It's not too dissimilar to this, except that one has a menu. You, can, you don't need an app with that one. And uh, I've used uh, some other Japanese brand um, in a training class once, just barely. Um, yeah, it uh, produced a splice. Uh, I think pretty much all the splices we did today were fine. It's just me not knowing how to use the machine. That's, that's why I kept breaking them. Uh, so I think it already did the tensile test. I, I just expected that in semi-auto mode it would uh, ask me, like it would uh, wait for me to push a button. But I'm pretty sure what was happening there was it was um, trying to align the fibers, finding the fibers to be perfectly aligned, and then doing pre-arc anyway. And uh, th th that's a possibility. Like, you saw it was arcing during the um, the step, and it did the double leap, which I think indicates that it's done. Um, and uh, certainly, I, I think it might have done an okay splice even with the um, with um, before we did the arc calibration also. Uh, included tools, I mean, they're not bad. This, uh, this one's preset at the factory. It worked quite well, except for that arc calibration fiber. That's pretty tough to strip. But that's really kind of random. Some fibers seem to be a lot tougher. Uh, this uh, cleaver here also, when you saw the cuts it did, I wasn't really taking a whole lot of care. I haven't adjusted it at all. Um, the plate here included seems to have a decent amount of uh, flexibility in what you can put in it. Uh, I was doing all my cuts at sort of around 10 millimeters uh, length, which is perfectly acceptable with this splicer, uh, which is good because, uh, like, I haven't measured this, but um, like it's a fairly short splice overall. Uh, heater works quite well as well. Uh, I didn't try stripping the outer outer sheathing on a two millimeter fiber though, uh, because I uh, just used a pair of scissors to do that part. Uh, it also didn't really come with any Kevlar shears, so you'll need to provide your own uh, for that purpose. Uh, so I mean, overall, from my point of view, yeah, if you need a fusion splicer, I'd recommend this. Um, there's you know, splices fibers, I guess.